Okay, great. Once again, my name is Sean Parker. I work for 3D Systems Geomagic. And for my portion of the webinar today, we will be taking Ian's STL and bringing it into our plugin for SolidWorks. Geomagic for SolidWorks is an add-in for SolidWorks. It is licensed the same way that SolidWorks is licensed using the FlexTerra licensing, but it is a separate license. So once you have access to our license, you will have access to the full set of tools and abilities that Geomagic SolidWorks has to offer. Geomagic for SolidWorks is also backwards compatible from 2011 all the way up to 2018. Uh, for this demonstration, I will be using SolidWorks 2017. As you can see when you open SolidWorks, we exist as a separate tab just as any other plugin. Our workflow is from left to right, the first step being import, the last being analysis. All these tools come from our standalone 3D processing applications and we've brought them into SolidWorks environment or for better customer usability. So let's get started. First, select the import button and bring in the STL. In the part tree, right click on the part and select edit feature. This allows us to see the amount of triangles imported and the size of the bounding box that is created around the mesh. If we right click in the viewing window, we can bring up the context menu and we see the selection tools and selection options. The first selection tool being the box select. The next is the polygon selection tool. Then the lasso tool, tool, and finally the paintbrush tool. Also in the context window, we can invert the selection as well as set the selection to select through. Now we can do a little bit of mesh processing. So we want to remove the bumpiness of this part. And what I'm going to do is turn on my edges. And zoom in a little bit and then select simplify. And I'm going to set this to 33%. So what this tool does is a curvature based intelligent uh, decimation. And really what that is is it removes triangles on the flat surfaces and keeps the triangles in the uh, areas of high curvature. I'm going to turn off edges. So it's still a little bumpy as you can see, but we're going to go ahead and do a smooth. And this should smooth it out. Now this part at this point looks like it's complete. However, there still might be some issues with the mesh that we can't see. So I'm going to diagnose the mesh. And all the issues are highlighted in red. So I'm going to click the checkbox. Okay, that looks great. Handheld scanners at the moment don't have a great way to orient the work to a world coordinate system. So we'll need to set that up using reference features. The first feature I'm going to use is symmetry plane and what I'm going to do is uh, line it up as best as I can and then draw a line down the center of the part. Now when I select preview it's going to best fit this plane to the middle of that part. That looks pretty good. I'll do the same thing in a slightly different fashion. I'm going to select the top surface of this part by using my smart select and best fit a plane to that. Now if I want to put an origin in a specific place I'll need a third reference. I'll create a reference axis that intersects plane 2 which will then allow me to create a reference point so that I can place my origin. Okay, now that all of the reference geometry has been created, I can return to the Geomagic for SolidWorks plugin and orient the mesh. So I'll select Orient Mesh. I'll start with the origin, which is going to be point 2, then the z-axis, which will be plane 4, then the x-axis, which is going to be the symmetry plane. 
At this point, you'll notice that the z-axis is inverted. All I have to do is hit that button to invert it to the correct orientation. Now that the mesh is in the correct orientation, I can go ahead and remove the reference geometry. And then, as we can see, the part is aligned to the world. Let's select the front, the side view. Perfect. Now it's ready to be modeled. Again, there are two methods to generating CAD, the first of which is auto surfacing. Selecting auto surface tells, tells the software to extract surfaces from the mesh. Using this method, I don't have a lot of control. I can tell it basic geometry type, the patch count, surface detail, and surface fitting. Uh, this is good for creating models or simple parts. The result of auto surfacing is a series of NURB surface patches that have been fit to the contour of the part, but really there's not much editability to this part. One thing that this is good for is creating basic molds or simple parts. So let's go ahead and do a, an example of a mold. Now what we need to do is set up a quick plane so that I can get a solid mold out of this. I'll go into the reference geometry in SolidWorks. I'll use the front plane as my reference, and then I'm just going to offset it. It looks like I need to invert it. There you go, bring it up a little bit. That's good. And then I'll draw a quick rectangle on this plane. And then I'll extrude that rectangle downward. Uncheck Merge. Select OK. All right, now we have a basic block. From here, we can go to Insert, then Features, then Combine select subtract and then select the two bodies and then hit the check mark now we have our cavity created you can see that this is a great way to create an injection mold for a toy or a shoe or an organic shape that is very difficult to model with in traditional CAD based programs such as SOLIDWORKS so we'll go ahead and delete this part and start on the uh, second workflow which is basically just reverse engineering off of the mesh data. So we'll start with the Extract Extrusion tool and use the Smart Select option to select the triangles along this edge here. And we'll just get a few places. And, and you can see that uh, the Smart Selection is not always the best uh, selection type. So I'll change over to the Polygon Select and line it up here a little bit better and then clear the selection and then draw our polygon selection. I'll be sure just to get the edge. So you can see that this sketch is a bit off, but not to worry. I can go in and select the front plane and constrain this sketch to that plane so that when I create this extrusion, uh, it is right over the top of the mesh. This is a native SOLIDWORKS sketch with lines and arcs that are totally editable. The only difference between the SOLIDWORKS and the GeoMagix for SOLIDWORKS is uh, GeoMagix for SOLIDWORKS provides me this hash line that is the representation of the mesh part which I selected earlier. But otherwise I can go in, delete, and edit as normal. And we'll create a line here. And then sync up the corners and then we'll just add a fill it to get it closer to what we want it's a little bit out okay we'll change up this other one good 
So then we accept that. And then you can see that it's edited and, and is a better fit to that mesh. Great. So let's continue to the next part. I will basically repeat this for the next couple of features on this part. So I'm going to use my Smart Selection tool, and this is going to give me a better Smart Selection, so I will accept that. I'm going to again constrain it to the front plane, and then hit the check mark. And now that these two features are created, we need to somehow create that slot on the bottom of the brake pad. And to do that, we're going to take a cross-section of the mesh. So I'll select cross-section. And then I'm going to need to use a reference plane. I'll use the top plane as the reference. And you can see that it's out in space, so we'll just push it back into the part. That's good. Select OK and hide my solid body and in my mesh and you can see that we have a cross section now the hash line itself is not editable but we can use it as a reference to draw uh, lines and arcs to create this uh, slot so I'll create the two lines and draw one on top and then just draw a three point circle That's okay. A little bit of deviation there, not too bad. And then I will trim that out and connect everything. Looks good. I'll hit the checkbox. And we'll turn back on our solid body. And then we'll use this profile to create a cut extrude. And we'll take it out both directions all the way through the part. And now that that feature is created, we can go ahead and turn on our mesh and begin to finish up these last two features here on the top. So I will return to the GeoMagic for SolidWorks plugin and again select cross section. And once again, we're going to need a reference plane. So I will select the front plane, and I'll have to adjust it a little bit. And I'm only going to try and get this top feature here. All right, perfect. And then I'm going to accept the command. And then I'm going to go ahead and sketch out this outline. Once again, this hash line is uh, reference geometry only, but our sketches are able to snap to them. And here we go. And you'll have to forgive me, I'm not the fastest I'm not the fastest sketcher, so this piece will take just a little bit. Here I'm creating a three-point circle for this arc. And then really all that's left is to create a bunch of straight lines and using the corner trim, connecting all the corners and then just doing a couple of fillets. But Geomagix for SolidWorks uh, brings in mesh editing, and that is something that SolidWorks is lacking quite a bit. So it's not as intuitive as our standalone products, but at least you get a at least you get a basic sense of how to use this tool. And then later on, if you decide to go into DX, it's a easier transition. So now we'll just 
use the corner trim and line, get all the corners lined up. Then we'll extend these ends to our circles. There we go. And then we'll just do a little bit of quick trimming here. Remove the lines, remove the excess. And, and then finally we'll just do a little bit of uh, filleting. Perfect. There we go. All right. Now we'll go ahead and extrude this part and we'll extrude it into the body uh, and then just bring it up just a little bit. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down in the body. And we'll make sure that it merges. Perfect. Oh, it looks like I forgot the uh, holes there, but it's okay. So last but not least, we'll just go ahead and uh, model out these three little nubs here. And we're going to do it the exact same way. Basically, we're going to use a cross section use our front plane as a reference and we'll drag it down into those uh, three little nubs just enough so I can get a reference perfect and then I'll go ahead and edit this sketch And I'll just put some quick circles on there. Oh, come on. Let me try that one again. <laughs> there we go. Let me go ahead and accept that, and then we'll extrude these again. And finally, we just need to do a deviation analysis to see how close our solid body uh, came to our mesh. So simply select the solid body and the mesh and then hit the preview. And it looks like we were pretty close. A couple of fillets, uh, maybe a little bit more attention to detail in the back. But with that, I'll hand it back to Ian.